<laughs> I think we're ready. <laughs> Here we are, live once again. How you doing? Yes, it is. It's exciting. It's a beautiful day. It's a summery day. And we're here to go over our top story today, which is five reasons to invest in real estate. That's right. You know, it's a crazy market out there right now, but I know there's always the number one and uh, hedge to inflation is real estate investing. It is. And it's five tips for real estate investors. So our top story today is five tips for real estate investors. That's right. <laughs> I got that right the second time, correct? That's right. <laughs> number one, take your time. You know, if you have your money saved and you have your you know, idea of what you want to buy, that's great, but it doesn't necessarily mean the right property is going to come, uh, come along right then just because you're ready. So you need to be patient um, and investigate the properties you're interested in buying thoroughly. So don't get in a hurry and just want to buy something because you're ready. You want to buy the right property. That's right. A lot of times people get approved for a loan or even if they're paying cash and they say, hey, I've got everything ready to go. I've sold out of my stocks or I've got this, I've got that, I've got my investors ready, let's go buy something and they get in a big hurry. Now we know prices seem to be going up, what, on a daily basis? Yep. So you, we're not saying wait too long, just wait for the right property. That's right. We've had some um, situations where people get excited and they just want to write on every single property that comes in their price range, well, it might not be the right property for you and your needs just because it comes on the market. Correct. What you don't want to do is take the round peg and try to put it through the square hole. And that's what happens. You walk through a lot of times, you'll go, oh, we can fix that or we can do this or, you know, we can improve that. We can move that wall. We can shore up the foundation under here. We can put a new roof on it. And you're right. You can do all that stuff. Just wait for the right property and the right property still might need all that stuff. That's right. Is that correct? That's right. <laughs> so it kind of piggybacks on our number two tip, and that is keep it simple. So a lot of people in California, where we are, they'll sell a property here, and then they'll say, hey, let's go to a different state or a different area. And then they start looking at five properties, and they want to buy all five at the same time. Now we've discovered with past experience, it's best to buy them one property at a time. Is that correct? That's right. <laughs> they always need more work than you think and it's gonna be harder to get them closed than you think. So we always recommend, especially as a new investor, these are tips you know, probably for a first time investor, that you buy them one at a time. Get your feet wet, get in there, see how it goes before you jump into your next one. Even as experienced investors, you know, you still want to buy them one property at a time. Let's say you're looking at a portfolio of, let's say, five properties. Doesn't matter whether it's five or 30. You look at every property as a standalone property. And usually if they bunch them up like that together, they're putting them all together for a reason. This one is a great property. This one, not so great. So if we put them together, we'll end up with the ultimate price on both of them instead of, Wholesale on one, retail on the other, which basically means more money on one and less money on this one. So always bust them out. I, and it doesn't really matter. I've seen experienced investors go in and buy multiple properties in situations when they should have been buying one at a time. That's right. That's right. So what's the one way to do that? To invest in rentals. So like he just said, we're investing in rental properties. So what does that mean? You want to buy apartments? You want to buy duplex? You want to buy a single family homes, so that could mean a lot of things, buying rentals. Do you want to buy commercial property? So what kind of property is going to fit your needs and, and what you're looking for? So you want to always, what's the number one uh, you know, thing in real estate? Location, right? So what's the location? Is it near you? Is it far from you? Is it in state, out of state? We always recommend you know, your first investment property, you try and buy it close. To you where you can manage it and take care of it and learn the ropes uh, but sometimes that's not possible so you just have to make sure in your budget that you're budgeting for a property manager and someone to be your eyes and ears if it's far away from where you can uh, watch over it yourself yeah a lot of times people have different knowledge about different locations in different states 
and that may be not be your knowledge. Let's say it's a family member, a brother, a sister, nephew, cousin, whoever that knows real estate in that area. Now we also have a full referral network where we can refer people that are experts in the area. I mean, these days it's a street by street market. This street good, the other street not so good. And the only way to know that is have an expert on the ground for you. So if you do that, that's a big leg up. So if you can't buy locally, which happens around here, the prices have skyrocketed so quick that you can buy five properties, let's say in a different state or one property here. We're not saying buy one property or buy five properties, either one, just buy the right property, whatever that looks like, but at least be knowledgeable about the area or hire somebody that's knowledgeable about the area. And like Lisa said, if it's out of the area, out of the state, then make sure that you put that in your budget for expenses. Extra expenses, the property that's out of the area is probably going to have more maintenance. You know, they might call you and say, hey, you know what, the garbage disposal doesn't work. And it's like, oh, no, are you kidding me? That's brand new. The plumber goes out there and then they find an obstruction in there. No fault of the garbage disposal, no fault of the landlord, but a fault of the tenant. And they didn't know it was in there either. So that's kind of a no fault situation. Where'd you get that example? <laughs> it happens. We, we, we just had that one this week. It one of our rentals. It does happen. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's really nobody's fault. Ultimately, the responsibility falls upon the landlord. You okay. want to make sure that you give them a good product that they're willing to pay the rent for every month because it's a big part of their budget to pay rent. It's a big part of the homeowner's budget to make their house payment. So... Just make sure that you set aside extra expense money for things that can come up that are out of your control and that you can't go personally check out. All right, another thing about when you're buying a rental property, especially your first time, who's your tenant? You know, the property may look great, but who are you gonna rent it to? Do you have a, a high density job population there? Do you, is it a college town? Is it a rental market? Is it a vacation market? Who's your tenant? So you want to go one step beyond just picking a property, but who are you going to be renting it to? So there's always another step, and you want to make sure if you're going to have a rental property that you have a tenant pool that is going to be robust to keep it rented. Correct, and this kind of coincides with what you just said. And our tip number four for real estate investors, and well, it doesn't matter if you're a first-time investor or an experienced investor, Look into a vacation home. Now, what would that look like? You're looking at a vacation home, a place that you like to go, you probably know the area, and then you're more looking at an Airbnb. So Airbnb, the return on that's going to depend. If you know the area well, and like Lisa said, if it's, you know, there's a lot of jobs or there's a lot of people coming and going all the time, let's say it's an oil field town or whatever it is, if you your Airbnb revenue is going to depend on how often it's rented. Now, when you say vacation home, obviously if you've got an Airbnb, it's fully furnished, you've got dishes in the cabinets, you've got silverware in the drawer. So when you go there to check it out, in between rentals, you can actually stay there to improve the property. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't want to get into taxes for sure. <laughs> so you want to check with your tax professionals to see how many days you could actually use it and how many days you can actually improve it. I would think those would be different, especially if you're doing, you know, some major improvements, a new roof, new flooring, new kitchen. So that may all change, but it definitely kind of adds a little bit of a, what would you say, a benefit to buy a vacation house. If you use it as a vacation rental, you're always improving the property and you get to use it let's say occasionally. Yeah, and now there's a lot of times make sure you're allowed to use it as a vacation rental before you close escrow. Make sure the area you're looking at, it's allowed. Yes, Airbnb and VRBO and all the other acronyms out there for vacation rentals. There's been a lot of cities and you know counties and ACMAs where some areas you can, some areas you can't. Sometimes it makes the neighbors happy Sometimes not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Another option on uh, our fifth tip for investing in real estate is, you know, maybe you're going to flip a property. 
So maybe you do have experience in that and or you want to try it for the first time. My first little hedge of advice is it's not as easy as it is on TV. So make sure that you thoroughly inspect the, pro the property, you know what you're buying and you do a budget, a realistic budget on what it's going to cost to flip the property. And keep in mind right now supplies are difficult to get and uh, workers are difficult to get. So whatever your budget is that you come up with that you think is um, reasonable, add 25% because it's probably going to cost you at least that. So flipping your property is also an option um, for investing in real estate. Yeah, there's do it yourself and then you can also be the, let's say the general contractor yourself and then hire in the subcontractors to come in and do the work for you. I mean, you may not be a painter, you can paint, but you can hire professional painters that can come in and probably do the work in, you know, half the time and a better job than what you could do. Now, not all painters, not all contractors, not all subcontractors are going to do a better job than you could do yourself. Obviously, if you own the property, you want to do the very best you can for that property. Sometimes con subcontractors, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that definitely how that goes down. Yes, so let's say you're going to buy a vacation house and then you fix it up a little bit and you go, oh my gosh, I just got an offer on the house. I'm not even through, but I'm close. And you say, hey, I'll go ahead and sell it for a tidy little profit. Then that automatically make, kind of makes you a flipper, doesn't it? Get, yeah, initially. <laughs> um, keep in mind, if you're looking for people to help you fix up your property wherever you are, ask your realtor. Who's your realtor? Because we have all the resources. If you need uh, people to help you, we are always fixing up houses because uh, most houses always need something. So ask your local realtor uh, if, if you are lo looking for someone to help you because we use those services all the time. Yes, our five tips for real estate investors. I think these tips are time proven. Doesn't matter whether you've been doing it a long time, you're just getting started, or you're somewhere in between. They always seem to work out. If you kind of just follow these, let's say, loose guidelines. All right, so if you're thinking about investing in real estate for the first time, or you've invested in real estate and you're thinking about uh, buying a new investment property, you know you where you can find us. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Okay, terrific. Thank you.